So if you haven't seen my most recent episode yet on Legion Loyalty, make sure you check that episode out to find out why I started laughing when I first saw this card. But don't leave just yet because, oh my goodness, is this card good. It has a massive effect and sheesh, are there going to be some decks out there that really, really want this. So with all that said, let's jump into it. So, Font of Magic is a mythic, and my goodness, is about everything mythic about this. It's an enchantment for a three and a blue, and it says, Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game. So, this is a very straightforward card, but one that, well, I mean, this thing can be incredibly impactful, especially if you get this down early. Reducing the cost of spells, of course, can be even more impactful than ramping. I mean, again, throughout the game, you're going to be saving more and more mana, the more and more spells that you cast. Now, ironically, I mean, to start off, this technically could be, you know, instant sorcery spells you cast cost zero less to cast, because if you haven't cast your commander yet, well, you're not getting any cost reduction on this. That being said, again, I mean, at the very least, if you cast your commander just once, you are getting one mana reduction for every instant sorcery spell, which for four mana is not bad, and we'll talk about some comparable cards to that. That being said, obviously the potential for this card is a lot higher than that. In fact, when it comes to cards in the 99 of a deck, and, and yes, I'll talk about some commanders that can help with cost reduction as well, but when it comes to cards in the 99, this card probably has the highest potential for mana savings for instant sorcery spells. Obviously, the vast majority of decks out there don't want to have to keep recasting their commanders over and over again, but let's face it, I mean, commanders get dealt with, you know, either by target removal or board wipes, so... Yeah, you're bound to cast your commander a couple of times in a game, and as long as this stays in play, you are going to get a lot of cost reduction from this. I mean, even if you draw this later in the game and you play it, obviously it's still counting how many times you cast your commander from the command zone, so say you already cast your commander three times, you put this down and you get a massive cost reduction on your instants and sorceries, and of course you can do a lot of powerful things from there. So yeah, Spellslinger decks rejoice because this thing can really help you go off. And of course, with this, there are certain types of commanders and a mechanic for commanders that we'll talk about here in a bit that of course benefits this even more. But before we jump into that, let's jump into some of those comparable cards that I mentioned earlier. First up, how about some comparable cards like Goblin Electromancer, Jace's Sanctum, and even Arcane Melee? Goblin Electromancer is a goblin wizard, just a 2-2, but it says instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Now, this card sees a ton of play in Commander, and it's not, you know, just because it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. You know, that's, that's nice, but, you know, the main thing, obviously, is that this thing reduces the cost of your instant sorceries, which can save you a ton of mana throughout the game. Next up, perhaps the most comparable card to this new one is Jinx's Sanctum, which is in Shaman for the exact same cost, and it says, Instant Sorcery sells you cast, cost one less to cast, and on top of that, whenever you cast an Instant Sorcery spell, scry one. So, this helps reduce the cost of your spells, and on top of that, it can help you with card selection as well. That being said, in the vast majority of situations, I'm not saying all situations, the vast majority, I would much rather have one that reduces the cost even further and, you know, you don't get that scry, but that's okay. Yeah, I mean, Font of Magic, even if it's just at, you know, two, I would take that. And speaking of reducing the cost of instant sorceries by two, well, that's exactly what Arcane Melee does. It says, instant sorcery spells cost two less to cast. Now, keep in mind, it does not have the text like the other ones do. You cast. This applies to every single instant sorcery spell, including your opponents as well. And yet, this card still does see play. And again, the potential for Font of Magic is a lot higher than this. Yeah, two is a great cost reduction. Font of Magic can get even higher than that, and it costs less for you to actually get out. And on top of that, again, it doesn't benefit your opponents at all. So yeah, Font of Magic has a ton of potential. And again, the decks that are already running these cards are absolutely going to love it. Now, when it comes to commanders that actually really might want to utilize this card, the first one that actually came to my mind, which, okay, they're... There's a technicality here because technically the color identity for Rograk, Son of Roga, is red, but it does have partner, which is the mechanic that I was alluding to earlier. So if you choose a partner that has blue in the color identity, obviously you can utilize it. And yeah, 
Rog Rack was the first commander that came to my mind. Rog is a 0-1 Cobalt Warrior with first strike, menace, and trample for 0 mana. So, obviously, I mean, just starting off on turn one, you're going to play this for free, and, uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty of times throughout the game where you can keep playing for very cheap. I mean, even with commander tax added again and again and again, you can just keep casting your commander pretty easily. And, of course, the reason I alluded to partner earlier is because, again, Fawn of Magic counts when you cast either of your commanders if you have partner commanders. So, yeah, just keep casting Rog and your other commander, again and again and again and i mean the amount that you can save with fauna magic in play in a rog rack deck is hilarious i mean depending on what your other commander's cost is i mean by the time you even get to turn four to cast fauna of magic you may have even been able to you know play rog rack sacrifice rog rack to something for some value recast rog rack cast your other commander and then that's going to be instant sorcery cells you cast cost three less to cast and that's just to start for fauna of magic so, yes, I would very much love to see someone's build with a Rograk deck around Fauna Magic. I think that could be a lot of fun. Now, another partner commander that came to my mind is actually Krark the Thumbless, which pairs very well with a blue partner commander with Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Krark the Thumbless is a 2-2 Goblin Wizard for one in a red, so very low to the ground, and it says whenever you cast an or Sorcery spell, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, return that spell to its owner's hand. If you win the flip, copy that spell you choose targets for the copy. And of course, again, partner, so you can pick two commanders if they both have partner. And then Sakashima Thousand Faces is basically a clone for your commander, a second copy of it essentially, a 3 one human rogue, and when it enters the battlefield, it enters a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima Thousand Faces other abilities. The legend rule is applied to permanent you control, so yeah, you can essentially copy your commander. And cost reduction on your instant and sorceries is going to be fantastic with a Krark Sakashima deck. Because with this kind of a spell slinger deck, you're going to be casting spell after spell after spell. You know, some spells multiple times because they get bounced back to your hand. But uh, essentially, you can benefit heavily from other magecraft triggers. And you can benefit heavily by just, you know, recasting the same spell again and again and again. You know, if it's a ritual and you've got, you know, two copies of Krark in play, essentially. And one of them, you know, you flipped and you lost. And one of them, you flipped and you won. You get a copy of it and you also get it back to your hand. So you just keep gaining a ton, a ton of incredible value out of this especially again when you've got a cost reducer that makes it so easy to cast all of your spells and yeah that can lead to a very long and very fun turn for you and again keep in mind since Krark is low to the ground yet yeah, recasting is not that difficult and again the more times you recast the better your enchantment gets and yeah of course i could keep going on and on and on about partner combinations because well fauna magic just again is the kind of card that heavily benefits from you having more than one commander so, of course, depending on your build, Pyrrhon Toothy is an example as well, the one that could work well with this enchantment. It's a pretty low-to-the-ground commander combination, and with this one, you've got access to green, so you can ramp quite effectively if you need to recast your commanders, and, and yeah. Although these commanders don't, you know, either specify that they work well with, you know, instants and sorceries or enchantments, there are plenty of fantastic effects that do work well with them, and by reducing the cost of your instant sorcery spells, well, yeah, if you're utilizing, you know, blink spells to blink Toothy for value, Great, you can now cast them for very cheap. Or if you've got some massive spells in the deck that can add a lot of counters to things, great, you can cast those for cheap too. But again, just keep in mind that partner benefit and interaction. Moving on, a fantastic spell slayer commander is Mizzix of the Is Magnus, a 2 2 goblin wizard that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost greater than the number of experience counters you have, you get an experience counter. And on top of that, instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less cast for each experience counter you have. So this commander is all about reducing the cost of your instant sorceries by a ton. And the thing is, this commander is quite powerful, so it can be dealt with a few times. You have to keep recasting it, and uh, yeah, when you do so, again, you're going to benefit, at least in some way, by making Fawn of Magic more impactful. And again, if Fawn of Magic is in play and your commander isn't, that can kind of do some of the heavy lifting for this deck, you know, until you can get your commander back into play. Next up, a commander that definitely benefits heavily from cost reduction. Let's talk about Chun-Li Countless Kicks. She's a 3-3 Human Soldier with Multi-Kick Resorgus. When she enters the battlefield, exile to X target instant cards from your graveyard where X the number of times Chun-Li was kicked. Put a kick counter on each of them. And whenever Chun-Li attacks, copy each exile card you own with a kick counter on it. You may cast the copies. Now, keep in mind, it does say you may cast the copies. It does not say you may cast the copies for free. So you do have to pay to actually cast those instants. That being said, a little bit of cost reduction goes a long way with this commander, and, you know, a cost reduction that can actually benefit again when you have to recast your low-to-the-ground commander even more can be fantastic. 
I mean, you could pretty much probably just include any kind of a spell slinging commander or one that benefits from a spell slinging that has blue in the color identity, like, you know, Talran Sky Summoner. Talran's a 2 2 Merfolk Wizard that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2 2 Blue Drake creature token with flying. Obviously, by just reducing the cost of your spells by a little bit when you're going to be casting an absurd amount of spells throughout the game, that's great. And, you know, if Talran gets dealt with, you get to recast, and then you get even more benefit off of, you know, your cost reduction. So yeah, if you've got a spell slinging deck and it has blue in the color identity, you're probably going to want to consider this brand new mythic enchantment. Or how about a new commander like Analo the Painter, a 1-3 death-touching vampire assassin that says the first instant or sorcery so you cast each turn as casualty too. So this commander can benefit from you casting some massive spells with some massive effects and by giving you, you know, a secondary copy of a century just by sacrificing something that's got power two or greater. And yeah, cost reducers like this one can definitely help you get to those massive spells quicker. And of course, on top of that, well, this commander again is low to the ground and can definitely have a target painted on its back, ironically, because it is a painter. Haha, -ha, get it? Anyways, <coughs> that was bad. But yeah, this commander is low to the ground and can get dealt with a couple of times probably throughout the game, and you can just keep getting it back into play for not all that much mana, and again, you get even more benefits with this brand new enchantment. And finally, another kind of commander that I do want to mention is that one that actually has a cost reduction itself with a card like Emery Lurker of the Lock. Emery is a 1-2 Merfolk Wizard that's going to cost one less cast for each artifact you control, and when it enters the battlefield, you mill four cards, you can tap and choose target artifact card in your graveyard, you can cast it this turn. Now, Emery decks, uh, you know, very typically, obviously, are built around artifacts because of that cost reduction, but yeah, I mean, if you've got a decent amount of instants and sorceries in there, and you've got a slot that you can, you know, utilize for something like Font of Magic that can take advantage of the amount of times that you can recast this commander, you can get some pretty absurd effects from it. Again, I am not saying it's for every single Emery build out there, but I'm saying that, yeah, if you've got a commander that can either, you know, benefit from cost reduction itself, or again, a partner commander, make sure just keeping in mind the absurd amount of times that you can cast a commander from the command zone, and the amount of benefits you can get from this brand new enchantment. But yeah, I think Fauna Magic is a, an exciting new card that has a lot of potential. I mean, even just at, you know, the base value of you having cast your commander once from the command zone, just once, this card would still be in consideration for a decent amount of Spellslinger decks out there. I mean, Jace's Sanctum sees a ton of play, and, and it's not for that Scry. The Scry is nice. Don't, don't get me wrong. The Scry is very nice. But even if it didn't have that, it would still see play in some Spellslinger decks because cost reduction is incredibly impactful. And of course, the potential for this card is much higher, and again, there are ways to take advantage of this, you know, if you've got partner commanders or a commander that can reduce its cost, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, having the potential to save you 2, 3, 4, 5 mana maybe even on every single answer sorcery spell can get quite ridiculous. But of course, there are going to be even more exciting spoilers coming out, so make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more quick takes. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.